best. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel here. It's Lavender here and today I am doing another true crime case. This time I am doing the true crime case of the murders of Joshua Ford and Gina Crutchley story. So let's get started into this true crime case video. So yeah. So this case has been featured in a number of media and TV such as um, crime documentaries such as American Justice, Deadly Woman on Investigation Discovery, Forensic Files on HLN, Sins and Secrets, Deadly Sins, True Crime Daily on YouTube, and Snapped on the Auction Channel. In July 2009, a book entitled Cruel Death written by M. William Phillips was released about this case. So into the background of the victims. So Joshua Ford and Gina Crutchley were, bo were both a mortgage banker and insurance executive from Alexander, Virginia. And here's the background of the killers who murdered them. Erica was born in Roaring Springs, Pennsylvania to Charlotte Gale Cookie and Gerald M Michelle Grace. Benjamin Adam BJ, he was referred to, was born in Eastersville, Iowa to Elizabeth Ann and Greg Arthur Sh Shivert. Erica and Benjamin married in 1998. They eloped in Las Vegas when they were both 20 years old. She was an honor student and basketball star at Mary Washington College. Benjamin completed basic underwater demolition slash steel training class 212 in 1997 but never received the Navy enlisted certification for it. And he was, um, he had received a bad conduct discharge for repeatedly being absent without leave and poor performance in school. He wasn't that good in school. He did very poor in school. Shortly after marrying, the couple moved near Erica's hometown of Aluna, Pennsylvania. There they opened a separate, I mean, there they opened and operated a scrapbook store. So here is the murder story. Let's get into the murder story. So on May 25th, 2002, the couple who were both 24 years old at the time met another couple, Joshua Ford and Maritha Crutchley, a vacationing couple from Fairfax, Virginia, after a night of partying together at the Secrets nightclub in Ocean City, Maryland, the two couples went back to Streifers, the killer's hotel room, and located on the Rainbow on 112th Street. According to records, the couple claimed that Joshua and Jeannie stole Erica's purse and Benjamin pulled out a gun on the couple. The couple um, that was going to be murdered retreated to the bathroom and tried to escape out a window. Joshua was fatally shot four times with Erica's gun. Jeannie was also killed. Investigators believe that she was stabbed, but the official cause of death could not be determined from her remains. The bodies were then dismembered and disposed of in a grocery dumpster store in Rothelboth Beach, Delaware. The remains were transferred to a nearby landfill where they were discovered by searchers nine days later after the crime. The motive in this case was later determined just to be a thrill kill, just a completely senseless crime only done for the pleasure and enjoyment and the thrill of it. The victims failed to return to their homes and jobs in Northern Virginia after the holiday weekend ended. Both Crutchley and Ford were diligent workers and really missed a day of work according to friends and families and co-workers. They both kept in close contact with their families and friends. The Stripefords were arrested on May 31st, 2002, but not for the murders. They were caught burglarizing and robbing a Hooters restaurant. When police searched Erica's purse, they uncovered the driver's license of Ford and Crutchley, who at this point had been reported missing for days. They also found spent bullet casings, handcuffs, and weapons, including the... The 357 Magnum later discovered to be the murder weapon in this true crime case. Erica was later found to be wearing the, a ring belonging to Ford on a chain around her neck as a necklace. Police went to the penthouse condo um, hotel room in Rainbow where the couple was staying. There they discovered more evidence of foul play including blood in the bathroom of the master bathroom and in a dryer despite the Strayfert's Thorough attempt to cover up the murders and cover the tracks. They quickly left tons of evidence in the crime scene, including some spent bullet casings, presumably removed from the vi victims' bodies on the coffee table in the unit. 
A scrapbook Erica had made that was later found at the hotel outlined many of the murder details of the double homicide leading to investigators thinking that they did it because there was so much evidence they did it, so they were arrested. Erica later confessed to murdering the couple shortly after her arrest for the Hooter situation, but claimed that the idea was her husband's. For a short period of time, during the grand jury indicted the couple for murder, Erica had a deal for a lesser sentence as she agreed to testify against her husband. But the deal fell through because it became evident that she had played just as much of a role, if not more, in the killings than her husband. Because of the heavy publicity of this case, the couple's trials were moved out of the county. Benjamin's trial was held in Roxville and Erica's was held in Frederick. At Benjamin's 2003 trial, a 22-year-old woman named Melissa Stealing testified that she was subjected to the same ritual and treatment, however, that she was able to avoid being killed unlike the couple that got murdered in the hotel room. On April 9, 2003, Benjamin was convicted of second-degree murder and first-degree assault in the death of Crutchley and was acquitted of all charges in the death of Joshua Ford. He was later sentenced to 38 years in prison. Erica's trial started shortly afterwards on June 3, 2003. On June 11, she was convicted of first-degree murder in the death of Ford and second-degree murder in the death of Crutchley and was later sentenced to life in prison plus 20 years in prison. In March 2010, Benjamin filed for divorce, which was granted in August 2010. Both the couple have filed numerous appeals, all of which have failed and been denied. Benjamin exhausted his last appeal in 2010. He will be eligible for parole in 2021. Erica's appeal, citing ineffectiveness of counsel, was denied in 2014. She will be eligible for parole in 2024. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye guys, see you next video.